In the previous video, I've shown you how you can build the machine learning web application using the Streamlit and Scikit-Learn Python library, whereby you could adjust hyperparameters of the random forest regressor. And so in this video, we will be making some modification that will allow the web application to perform hyperparameter optimization. Particularly, we will be able to adjust the minimum and maximum value in the search range of the hyperparameter optimization for the number of estimator and also for the max feature parameters. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is open up your terminal. We're going to the desktop, going to the Streamlit folder, going to the ML op app folder, and then we're going to run it. But before doing that, we're going to activate the Conda environment. Make sure to change Data Professor to the name of your own Conda environment that you have created. If you're not using any Conda environment, then feel free to continue without doing this step. And then go ahead now to run Streamlit run and then the name of the app. You could feel free to name this anything you like. All right, and so this is the app that we're going to be building today. And so it's quite similar to the previous app, but then this version is enhanced with the ability to perform the tuning of the hyperparameters. So here, you're going to be able to tune the learning parameters comprising of number of estimator and also the max features. And so these two parameters will be tunable. So other parameters will be adjustable. So you could feel free to set other parameters like data split ratio to a desirable value of your interest. And you're also able to set the other parameters as well and other general parameters also. So let's have a look at the example data set. Let's press on it. And so here we're using the diabetes data set. So the performance is not so great. Feel free to change this to other data set like the Boston data set as well. And so this is the model parameters that you have selected from the side panel. And so this is the 3D contour plot or surface plot of the tuned hyperparameters. So you're going to be seeing here that the end estimator is right here from the range of 10 to 50. And the max features is right here from one to three. And then you're going to be seeing the accuracy here in the third dimension. So here we're going to be seeing that as the max feature increases, the performance also increase. As the number of estimator increases, the performance also increase. And so the sweet spot is somewhere here. Feel free to increase the learning parameters increase the number of estimator or the number of max feature, but then that will take longer time for the calculation. So let's go ahead now and take a look at the code line by line. Let me open up Adam. Okay, and so the first 10 lines here will be importing the necessary libraries that we're going to be using here. So we're going to make use of the Streamlit, of course, which is the web framework here. Pandas for reading the data frame. NumPy for handling with data matrices. Base64 for allowing us to encode the file that we will be exporting out, particularly the results from the tuned hyperparameters will be exported as a CSV file. So we need that encoding. And so the graph that you see here, which is interactive, will be made possible by Plotly. And then we're, of course, going to be making use of the scikit-learn and various functions of scikit-learn from splitting of the train test data set and also the random forest regressor and also the metrics, mean squared error, and also the R2 score model selection. We're going to be making use of the grid search and also we're going to be make, making use of the diabetes data set. 
Lines number 15 and 16 is setting the page layout. And here we're making it wide, meaning that the layout will be occupying the entire width of the website here. So it, it is expanding to the entire width. If we take it out, then this will be centered at the middle. I could show that again. So here, we delete it, we save it, we run it. And you see here that the dimension here, the width here is centered at the middle and it's quite narrow. And if we add it back, it will expand to the entire width. Okay, so let's continue. So lines number 19 until 25 will be the name here. And now lines 29 sidebar header will be right here on the side panel. Upload your CSV data is right here. And ST bar sidebar file uploader will be right here, allowing us to upload the files. And then the link to the CSV is right here in markdown. Specify parameter settings, set parameters right here, allowing us to set the data split ratio. Learning parameters, this one is right here. Okay, and so the parameters and estimator here will be making use of the st slider function. And we're going to be seeing the four input argument values here, 0, 500, the tuples of 10 and 50, and also 100. So here, let's change this to 100. Because we're going to make use of 100 to be the step size. So let's do that again. So here we have 10 and then 100, and then the step size will be 100, okay? Or actually, you could also make this to be 50, like before, and this to be 50, okay? So that, okay, the increment will be in 50, okay? And so the other parameters here will work in a similar fashion. So we're going to make use of the slider functions. For n estimator step here, we will specify the step size in a value box here. So here we specify it to be 10. So within the range of 10 and 50, the step size will be 10. Okay, so in the building of the machine learning model, it will be using number of estimators to be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, because step size is 10. All right, and so other parameters will work in a similar fashion. And so we're just going to skip the explanation. All right, and so main panel, line number 65, data set is right here. And then we create our custom function for allowing us to download the file, which will be the generated output. And we're also defining a custom function for building the model. So the custom function will be taking in a data frame as the input argument, and then it will be separating the data frame into the X and Y component. And then it will be printing out the following statement, a model is being built. Let's do it. Let's run it. When we run it, we will implement this build model function. Okay, so here, a model is being built to predict the following y variable. It's right here. And then it will print the name of the y variable, which is response. And the y variable is the last column right here. Okay, and then here, we're going to be printing out the error, particularly the mean squared error. Let's have a look on the panel here. Okay, so we can select it to be mean squared error or mean absolute error. And so similar to the previous video, we're going to be making some modification to the code here. So mean squared error, we're going to change that. Let's search for it, mean squared error. 
and we're just gonna call it error and then we're gonna say MSE or MAE okay and so save it and then re-implement this reload it and the model is being built all right and so here we have it error MSE or MAE so let's move up all right so after printing out the name of the Y variable here shown here we're going to be performing the data splitting on line number 86 and the split ratio will be determined by here the input argument and the default value is 80 right here okay and so it was in the sidebar right here data split ratio on line number 37 okay and then we're going to initiate the random forest regressor assigning it to the rf variable and then all of the learning parameters will be set by the sidebar as mentioned earlier and then we're going to be performing a grid search cross validation and then input argument will be using the estimator to be random forest that we have defined above here and then the param grid and then cv will be five And param grid will be here. Max features range and the end estimator range. Okay, so it's going to be here. The range of the end estimator and the range of the max feature will be assigned to the param grid variable, which will be used in the grid search CV. And then we're going to assign this grid search CV to the grid variable and then we're gonna build a model by using the fit function x train y train and then the model performance will be shown right here model performance right here and then we're printing out the r square the coefficient of determination right here and then the error for the y test so in this application we're just printing out for the test set and if you want to print out the results for the training set feel free to take a look at the previous video and it's just simply repeating the code for the test set but then just changing the name of the variable to x train from x test to x train and then you will get the result for the training set and so here we're going to be showing the best parameters right here and then the best parameters is max features of 3 and estimator of 40 with a score of 0 0.41 and then line number 115 is the model parameters it's right here the parameters used for the model building shown here and then we're going to be pre-processing the results from the grid search. And then we're going to be making use of this X, Y, Z data for building the following contour map here. And so this will be the plot of the contour or the surface plot. So you could call this the 3D contour plot or the 3D surface plot. And so as mentioned earlier, we're going to be making use of Plotly to create the plot. And then we're going to be saving the results into a data frame. And then this data frame will be exported as a file. And then you could download it by clicking on this link at the bottom, download CSV file. right here model performance so it's going to be this CSV data 
and then you could feel free to make some other plots of your choice. And then the essence of this web app will be relying on this if else condition. So if no input data CSV file right here, if there's no input CSV file, then it will be using the else statement here. Okay, so if there's no CSV file, you're going to be using the else component here. And so you're going to be seeing a waiting for CSV file to be uploaded. Right here, it's going to be displaying a waiting for CSV file to be uploaded. However, if you upload the CSV file, that the model building will be occurring automatically. Okay, so let me show you. So you could drag and drop your input CSV file. And you see here, the model building occurs automatically. And so this is our surface plot and you can see that the performance is pretty good here. And the more the N estimator becomes and the more max features become, the performance increases. So you could also hover to the particular points and you're going to be seeing that X, Y, Z is 40, 3, and 0 0.87. 0 0.875 is the accuracy. So it has the highest accuracy. Okay. So I hope that you're enjoying this video and it is helpful for you. And feel free to modify this code for your own data science projects. And you could simply change the data set to any other data set of your interest. If you're finding value in this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't yet done so, hit on the notification bell in order to be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.